Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a short film called In Captivity. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. At the beginning of the movie, we are introduced to the protagonist, Jim. He lives in a museum on humans and has never been to the outside world. The museum is run by cyborgs to exhibit how humans used to live in the past. Since humans are an endangered species, Jim is the main attraction of the museum. His apartment is tiny and consists of only three rooms, a bedroom, a bathroom, and the living area. There is a staircase to replicate the natural human habitat, but the stairs lead nowhere. Like the fake windows and doors, most of the things in the house are props, except for the TV that Jim likes to watch every day. In the opening scene, Jim is watching a TV show that he knows every word to. To him, the scenario in the movie is how humans interact in real life. The cyborgs deliberately make him watch specific shows so he would learn how human males are supposed to act around females. Jim is also devouring a pack of cereal, inside which he finds a rare toy prize. Not caring about the mess he makes, he excitedly runs to the shelf that he uses to present his cereal prizes. He places the one he found on the top and looks at it in fascination. It is clear that cereal is his everyday meal and he loves collecting the prizes. Collecting them and watching TV are his only hobbies. Every day, a cyborg museum guide brings a group of tourist cyborgs to show them the museum. They start by viewing the everyday human devices area where toasters, traffic cones, toy trains, lava lamps, and other everyday things are exhibited. But of course, the center of attention of the museum is Jim. The tourists watch him through a glass window in his apartment. The guide introduces him as the only human ever raised in captivity. The cyborg historians have tried to replicate the habitat that humans used to live in to create Jim's apartment. As the tourists watch Jim in his house, he gives them a thumbs up he doesn't complain about the strangers invading his privacy because he doesn't realize he is being held in captivity. Jim has always thought this is how life is supposed to be. The tourists observe and examine his behaviors and habits like he is the test subject of their experiment. When they are about to leave, an announcement encourages them to return to the museum to watch a new addition, a female human. Jim is very excited to hear this as he has only seen human girls on TV. He is ready to meet the girl of his dreams, like he had always imagined while watching TV shows. The next day is a joyous one for Jim. He gets up early, brushes his teeth, and takes an extra long shower. He also sprays himself with a lot of deodorant and dresses up in a nice suit to welcome his new female friend. As he nervously waits, a beautiful girl named Kaz is brought into the apartment. Before she says anything, Jim recites dialogue from his favorite movie, thinking it is the best way to greet her. But Kaz freaks out and starts running around the house, looking for a way out. Since she was captured from the outside world, she knows she is being held captive. However, the doors and windows of Jim's apartment are all fake just to make it look like a real home, so she cannot run away. Kaz goes to the bedroom to look for a way out, only to see a bed decorated with rose petals. Jim had some plans ready for her arrival. He hasn't learned any social skills from the movies, but he knows what sexual intercourse is. Kaz finally sees the cyborgs watching them from the windows and hides behind a wall. Jim introduces himself for the first time, making Kaz realize he is a human too. She asks him if he knows a way to get out, but Jim is confused as to why she would want to leave. He claims that he has all the amazing things in the apartment, like an extendable couch and the TV with over five channels on it. He even gets unlimited complimentary meals and energy drinks every day. Jim has all the fixings of a YouTuber. Kaz is unimpressed by his version of amazing things. She cries and Jim tries to console her with a rose. At dinner time, Jim and Kaz sit down to eat. Jim heats an artificial meal for her in an oven and starts eating, but Kaz is disgusted by the smell of the food. Seeing Jim enjoying it, she asks him if he has ever been outside. When he doesn't answer, she asks him to smell the food, but Jim still doesn't get what she is trying to prove. Kaz curses the cyborgs, who are still observing them like bacteria under a microscope. She turns back to Jim and explains to him that none of this is real. The food does not taste like what it's supposed to taste like, the stairs lead nowhere, and the front door doesn't open more than four inches. Jim listens to her complaints with a smile on his face and doesn't say anything. When she asks him why the fake apartment doesn't bother him, he yawns and says he is going to sleep. 
He excitedly asks Kaz to join him in the bed if she wants to. Kaz retreats away from him, asking why she would go to bed with him. Jim then suggests they propagate, which makes Kaz freeze in shock. She declares that she would never propagate with him and sends him to his bedroom. Jim angrily throws away all the rose petals from his bed and goes to sleep while the cyborgs outside still watch him. Kaz sleeps on the couch outside. At midnight, Jim brings out a blanket and puts it over Kaz. He also goes as far as to get his best cereal prize and put it beside her to keep her company. Kaz wakes up sometime later and sees the toy by her side. She gets an idea and uses the prize toys to create a landscape on the glass window. When Jim wakes up, he is upset to see his toys missing, but his disappointment vanishes when he sees the art Kaz has created. She tells him that the scenery on the glass is her home, but Jim still claims that the apartment is her home now. She calmly explains to him that human beings aren't supposed to live with cyborgs. Their home is outside. The following day at breakfast, Jim hides from the cyborgs using a plant. He then secretly tells Kaz there is a way to get out of the apartment. Every few days, an attendant with a cart comes through the main door. Kaz can hide inside the cart without him knowing and go back outside. But since the cart only has space for one person, Jim will remain stuck in the museum. Kaz worriedly tells him that he doesn't belong here, but Jim claims that he is happy and satisfied. He asks her to not worry about him and reach home safely. At night, a cyborg arrives with a cart to refill the fridge. Kaz carefully gets inside the cart and is taken outside without anyone knowing. The next day, the supervisor cyborg asks Jim if he knows where the female human is, but Jim says he doesn't. In the next museum tour, the tour guide introduces a group of cyborgs to Jim. However, when the couch moves around, they see that Jim has tied a cyborg to it and has himself escaped. In the final scene, we see Jim walk to a girl in a field that looks exactly like the landscape Kaz had depicted in her art. Jim's captivity has a striking resemblance to how animals in zoos, circuses, and aquariums are treated. The movie keeps things in perspective for humans on what it feels like to live away from your own kind in an environment of artificial perfection. Although many viewers criticize the abrupt ending, the unique concept of the film, in addition to the message behind it, makes the film in captivity worthwhile. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.